presentation. We'll still have people trickling in, but go ahead and continue eating and I'll begin our remarks for the day. Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 State of the City Luncheon. I'm City Councilwoman Lauren Ryder. I have the honor of serving as your Master of Ceremonies today. My fellow council member Charlie Thomas and I are sharing some duties today because the historic St. Mary's campus joins our district. So welcome to this iconic North Knoxville location. Please continue to enjoy your lunch as we get started. So today is Earth Day, if you didn't know that. So to keep in line with our goal of providing a clean and resilient future here in Knoxville, you may have noticed some environmentally friendly touches, including the canned beverages, recycling bins, and most notably a virtual program. You have a um, marquee or placard on your table there. If you could scan your QR code at your table, you will be able to see um, the rundown of today's events. Also, after today's luncheon, please help us by tossing your garbage and recyclables in the probable, proper receptacles. In the meantime, I hope you take a moment to enjoy the slideshow that was rolling earlier behind me. Thank you to the Sisters of Mercy, to Nova, the Thompson Photograph Collection, Little Oaks Academy, and others who help provide pictures that tell the story of where we are today. Those images were amazing. Everybody give them a round of applause for sharing those with us. As you all know, this luncheon is steeped in tradition here in Knoxville. And after two years of being unable to gather, we're delighted to be able to bring this back to an in-person event. Today is a great opportunity for us to come together to celebrate the progress we've made collectively and to look ahead to how we keep, plan to keep moving Knoxville in the right direction. It's a great honor to see so many people here to share this day with us, including dignitaries from all across the state. And if you guys, I'd like to recognize some people here. So from the state of Tennessee, we have uh, State Senator Becky Duncan Massey joining us. We also have State Senator Richard Briggs. We have U.S. Uh, Senator Marsha Blackburn is represented by Chelsea Ivins. U.S. Senator Bill Hagerty is rec uh, represented by former City Councilman Joe Bailey. U.S. Congressman and former Knox County Mayor Tim Burchett is here with us as well. We also have Jefferson County Mayor Mark Potts here with us today. <laughs> Former city mayors, Mayor Madeline Rojero. <laughs> Mayor, Former Mayor Dan Brown is here. <laughs> Former Mayor Randy Tyree. <laughs> Everybody loves those city mayors. Okay. <laughs> We also, for the city council representatives, we have Mayor Andrew Roberto, oh, Vice Mayor, Vice Mayor Andrew Roberto, uh, First District City Council Rep Tommy Smith, Third District City Council Seema Singh, Fourth District Lauren Ryder, Fifth District Charles Thomas, Sixth District uh, Gwen McKenzie, at-large City Council Rep Lynn Fugit. At-large uh, Seat B Janet Testerman. And um, Amelia Parker is also part of our crew. I feel like I have to recognize City Council, but she was not able to join us today. And then former City Council members, we have former Council Member and Vice Mayor Joe Bailey. Former City Councilman Mark Campen. Former City Councilman Rob Frost. Former City Councilwoman Marilyn Roddy. Former City Councilman Marshall Stair. Former City Councilman and Vice Mayor Finbar Saunders. And then we have City Judge Jez Rawson. 
Our county representatives, we have Knox County Mayor Glenn Jacobs here with us. And I've said former mayor, Tim Burchett is here. Um, Knox County Commissioner Charles Bussler. Knox County Commissioner Carson Daly. Knox County Commissioner Larson J. And I, I believe also uh, Knox County Commissioner Daisha Lundy is with us here. And Courtney, Commissioner Courtney Durrett as well. All right, and then also I'd like to recognize the Knox County uh, Superintendent of Schools, Bob Thomas, is here with us today. So that's a really large list. We have a lot of really great uh, elected officials that have given their time. And so did I miss anyone that I haven't recognized? Oh, State Representative Sam McKenzie. Thank you for joining us here today. Did I miss anyone else? Okay. Oh, Char, Charm Allen uh, is here as well, DA General Allen. And school board member, uh, there's several school board members here with our superintendent. Thank you guys. All right, I appreciate everybody for your service. It takes a lot of work to get everything done for our community. Judge Stevens is here as well. Thank you so much. Okay. I'd like to now invite my colleague Charlie Thomas to the podium to help kick things off today. Charlie? Good afternoon. We appreciate each one of you for being here today and for your continued support throughout the year. I want to welcome you to Knoxville's 5th District, a place I've called home for almost 30 years and I'm proud to be the area's current representative on city council. I especially want to acknowledge our folks from the surrounding neighborhoods of Oakwood, Lincoln Park, Roseberry, Lonsdale, Inskip, Norwood, and Fountain City. We make up one of the most varied and culturally diverse areas in Knoxville, and another reason I'm proud to be standing here today on their behalf. I would also like to acknowledge two groups today as examples of contributions in our community. First, the North Knoxville Business and Professional Association, which for years has provided support and camaraderie for area businesses, both large and small. And I also would like to acknowledge Sunshine Industries, a nonprofit on Central Avenue that provides vocational training, employment, and housing assistance to many of our fellow citizens. So let's give them a short round of applause. And they are just examples of the many groups in our area that are doing excellent work. Um, so together with my colleague, Lauren Ryder, who represents our sister district, uh, number four, literally just across the street, stones throw away, and we want to express our invitation for all of you for attending today. Uh, we know that the success is, that success is not something accomplished alone, it takes partnerships and collaboration, something thanks to all of you we are good at and getting better at in Knoxville every day. We also recognize that keeping the positive minimum, momentum in our great city hinges not only on the big decisions we make, but instead is a culmination of all the work we do, no matter how large or how small. This vacated hospital site could have been a blighted property in the middle of this North Knoxville neighborhood. Instead, the city has reimagined what this campus could be, and we were truly making a positive reclamation of this site. The LMU Tower is already educating our health care providers of tomorrow. And soon, this campus will house police, fire, E911, pension offices, city courts, and a new urgent care and behavioral health center. And this is all being done with an eye toward preserving some of the existing historic architecture and character that is special to this site. And there is more to come. Through an open public process, 
citizens' input will be welcomed as to determine the best possible use of the remaining areas here and in the surrounding area. So before we move on with the program, I would like to thank the sponsors of today's event, the men and women working to transform this site. So after I read the list of folks, uh, please join me in a round of applause to thank Messer Construction Company, Volkert Incorporated, McCarty Wholesale and McCarty Architects and Interior Designers, and also our friends at the Public Service Department who are often underappreciated for preparation of this site for today's event. And um, also for bringing this wonderful weather which uh, I personally requested about two weeks ago. <laughs> and they delivered it right on time. <laughs> So uh, let's all give them a big round of applause. And thank you all, and I'll uh, turn it over again to my friend and colleague, Lauren Ryder, to continue with the program. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. It's now time, oh, one quick announcement before I do that. Apparently the QR code, if you tried it, is not working. Many of you already know this, the website address is working. So isn't that amazing that the pandemic brought back the QR code? It's one of the things I think about. Um, it's now time for the invocation by Knoxville's fire department. Um, we're gonna have Chaplain Paul Trumpor followed by the presentation of the colors by the Fulton High School ROTC. And then the Christenberry Elementary fifth grade students will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Before Fulton High School's Imani, Anna, will grace us with her rendition of the national anthem. Please rise for the um, invocation by Trump, Captain Trumpor. You know, since the uh, early 1780s, when a young man came to a place called wilderness and he set up later a fort and then established a place that was going to be Knoxville they have sought their maker's guidance would you ask would you join me as we ask our maker's guidance to bless our happenings today our awesome God Lord we look to you for strength every day we look to you for our wisdom as these who are appointed in leadership make difficult decisions, but great decisions that affect all of our futures. Lord, we ask that you would bless the plans, bless the preparations, bless the working, but bless the hands that provide the work. Lord, I ask that you would protect our workers in the city of Knoxville, our fire, our law enforcement, our general government service workers, service department. Lord, so much of the work that they do, yes, is dangerous. But Lord, we seek to do it with your wisdom and with the safety that you have taught us. Help us to continue that amazing work in serving these, your people, in your place, the city of Knoxville. Amen. Amen. Justice for all. Stay here. <laughs> 
If you have not yet heard, the City of Knoxville has its first Youth Poet Laureate. We're proud to announce here today that 17-year-old Melody DeLilly is our Youth Poet Laureate. Melody is active in Farragut High School student government. She coaches middle school volleyball and recently received the Power Play Award from Muse Knoxville, where she works as a camp counselor. So let's welcome Melody up to the stage, and, and also our uh, Poet Laureate, um, the city's Poet Laureate, Rhea uh, Carmen, will also be joining her. Ready? State, State of, of the, the city. city. Standing in the place where empathy learned to serve humanity, we state that our city has stood for our city despite its unsteady states, tirelessly carrying the burden of necessity's work. A game of tug of war, players fighting, bargaining, desperately grappling for their own desires only to find ourselves together making the choice to use this special rope for good. To make indestructible the bond from neighbor to neighbor. 92 years in the making, a woven basket holding the fruits of the city, a harvest serving the citizens. With community as the master. Working to create space for history to become the home of leaders who dedicate their lives to sacrifice. Finding mercy from sisters and brothers, a mantra we pledge every morning in a lullaby we rest our eyes to at nightfall. Knitting together the safety net to empower the city. When we believe we have met our downfall, there is a seed planted in eroded soil that blooms despite its lack of nutrients. And in that soil, a divergent line exists, separating selfishness and selflessness. Separating hurt and birth. Purpose remains potent and filled with promise. Partners stand together to uphold a community, connecting stories through challenges instead of giving in to the greed of mankind. This is what illuminates, what empowers, what inspires my city, your city, our, our city. city. 
yeah. there are behind the name Knoxville, like magnolias blooming off of your tongue, each syllable a new seed, each vowel a basket of fruit. Spring is every season here, and the citizens grow with every harvest, foraging for connection in the place where empathy learned to serve humanity. We state that our city has stood for our city despite its unsteady states. And, and we are still standing. Thank you, Rhea, and thank you, Melody. That inspiring poem was written by these two talented women, um, and it is in the virtual program today. If you would like to learn more about the Poet Laureate program, you can go to the city's website, knoxvilletn.gov, poet. And now to the highlight of the day, the State of the City Address. Mayor India Kincannon is the 69th mayor of the city of Knoxville. And while she is in her third year in office, this is her first in-person state of the city as our mayor. Mayor King Cannon is not just a bold leader who selflessly makes tough decisions for the betterment of all of Knoxvillians. She is also someone I'm proud to call a friend. Mayor King Cannon has been serving our city and her community long before becoming our mayor. She spent 10 years as a member and chair of the Knox County Board of Education. She's a past president of the Beaumont Magnet PTA. She is a past president of the West, Not High, West High School Foundation. She was a 10-year member of the Project Grad Board and an officer, former officer of the Fourth and Guild Neighborhood Organization. Needless to say, it is evident that American Cannon is committed to making our neighborhoods, our schools, and our city be the best they can be. Under American Cannon's guidance, our city did not stop services during the pandemic. In fact, the city has emerged stronger and more resilient than ever before. So without further ado, please welcome our mayor and my good friend, India King Cannon. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here in front of you today. Thank you, Lauren, and thank you all for being here today for my first in-person State of the City luncheon. I also want to acknowledge Rhea Carmen, our, no our Knoxville Poet Laureate, and Melody Delali, Knoxville Youth Poet Laureate, for that beautiful tribute to our city's strength and resilience. And indeed, we are still standing. We are still standing. <clears throat> we have had an incredibly challenging two and a half years. We've gotten through the worst of COVID. We've pulled together after the tragic deaths of young people from gun violence. And now we are coping with supply chain challenges and the worst inflation since the 1970s. But Knoxville is resilient and through it all, we have stayed true to our mission and values. And because of that, we have a lot to celebrate today. We are fortunate to have a history of dedicated leaders in Knoxville. Councilwoman Ryder already recognized you, but I want to reiterate how glad I am to see you here in person today. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to start by welcoming everyone back to the historic St. Mary's campus, a special place born from a desire to serve the people of East Tennessee. And in just a few short months, that tradition of service will live on when we open the new home for our police and fire departments this fall. I'm super excited about that. This would not be possible without Mayor Madeline Rojero for initiating this transformation. When the hospital closed in 2018, this property could have become an abandoned blighted property. Instead, Mayor Rojero found a perfect solution. Thanks to her leadership and City Council's continued support, we are adapting this historic site to fill a new purpose, creating a much needed public safety campus on land that already has sidewalks, that already has streets, lights, and infrastructure. So thank you, Mayor Rojero, for a job well done.
St. Mary's holds a special spot in the hearts of so many Knoxvillians. With a show of hands, how many of you were born at St. Mary's, or had a child here, or maybe worked at the hospital? Wow, that's a lot of people. These memories and that legacy is so important, and that's why we have carefully preserved the original building behind us today, many of the memorials, and even some of the bricks. In fact, we have set aside nearly 1,000 bricks for anyone wanting to take a little piece of St. Mary's history home with them today. They will be available immediately following our luncheon over there. I also want to take a moment to thank the Sisters of Mercy who dedicated St. Mary's on this very day 92 years ago. Their legacy continues with a mobile clinic parked here today that brings health care to underserved people across East Tennessee. Thank you, sisters. Please raise your hand, sisters, for all of your work. We are so grateful for all your work and sharing your stories with us. The sisters are joined today by students and leaders of the LMU School of Nursing and the LMU School of Dentistry. And when all is said and done, LMU will have invested nearly $50 million on this campus to support the healthcare workers of the future. So a big thank you to Pete DeBusk and the entire LMU team. And while the city of Knoxville is not in the healthcare business, we know that our community desperately needs more access to care, particularly mental health services. That's why I'm so proud to partner with the state of Tennessee, Mayor Jacobs and Knox County, the McNabb Center, and all three of our local healthcare systems, UTMC, Covenant Health, and Tenova, on yet another component to this campus, the conversion of the former surgery center on the south side of the campus into an urgent care facility for the neighborhood and a behavioral health center for those experiencing mental health crises. A special thanks. That's going to be a game changer, and I want to especially thank Senator Becky Massey and Senator Richard Briggs, who worked at this site for many years as a surgeon, and thank you for all your help. Look what we can do when we work together to make good things happen for our community. Thank you. It is exciting to celebrate the revitalization of the St. Mary's campus, but my main job today is to let you know the state of the city. And here I have good news. Knoxville is on a roll. Our neighborhoods are strong. Our economy is vibrant. People want to visit Knoxville, invest in Knoxville, and move to our city. And yet, like any city, we also face challenges. We have too many people living in poverty, too many people struggling to find affordable housing. We have too many families mourning loved ones lost to gun violence. The people of Knoxville expect our city government to be an active player in seeking solutions to regional challenges. And we know there is power in partnerships. Thankfully, we have an excellent city council who are true partners in governing and problem solving. Elected on a nonpartisan basis, our council members are diverse in outlook. They act with civility and respect. And most importantly, they act effectively. I so appreciate their support and appreciate the vision we share for our city. Would all members of city council please stand to be recognized? Thank you all. Thanks to the support and partnership of City Council, we have much to celebrate. Let's start with our employees. I am so honored to work with the almost 1,600 men and women who dedicate their time to serving the residents of Knoxville and supporting a quality of life we can all be proud of. They patrol our neighborhoods, pave our streets, patch potholes, maintain our parks, put out fires, and so much more. Whether you live in West Hills, Holston Hills, Harrell Hills, or Colonial Village, whether you are visiting or doing business in Knoxville, city employees make our lives better. Our employees keep our city running 24-7, 365 days. Even during the height of a global pandemic, our crews never halted work. That alone is worth a round of applause. I've always 
always said that public safety is job one, and that remains more true today than ever. What is also clear is that public safety is not just the job of police officers alone, but the work of the entire community. When we were experiencing unprecedented homicides, I asked for emergency funds to help stop the violence. Our city council stepped up big time. With those funds, we created the city's first ever Office of Community Safety under the leadership of Lakenya Middlebrook to harness the power of partnerships in addressing violent crime. We've awarded hundreds of thousands in grants to area nonprofits working to interrupt violence in our city, and we are about to award even more similar work throughout the summer months when our children are out of school and most vulnerable. We started Crime Stoppers, an anonymous tip line program that has, in just one year, helped solve over three dozen cases. And we are working with local nonprofits like SEED and the Community Mediation Center to train and equip a team of street violence interrupters, folks like Denzel Brandt, Wando Stacy, Nicole Daniels, and many others who are ready to respond in a crisis to help break the cycle of violence. Thank you for dedicating your time to help us find solutions. We all saw during the pandemic how access to high-speed, high-quality internet became a defining factor in one's ability to work, learn, connect with loved ones, and even to access health care. That's why it is so exciting that KUB, with the support of City Council, will offer municipal broadband service to every electric customer with the first home scheduled to come online this year. I'm especially proud of the city and KUB's commitment to bridging the digital divide. This budget supports the student internet access program so low-income students aren't left behind. Another example of the power of partnerships. I see you school board members, we're doing that. <clears throat> of course, I also want to mention the multi-use stadium and bring in baseball back to Knoxville. I've always said that I would support this project if the benefits outweighed the costs. Thanks to the power of this public-private partnership, they most certainly do. This is a huge win for our city, and especially for those who have suffered from the legacy of urban renewal. The total estimated economic impact of this stadium project is $480 million. In sharing the cost with Knox County and Randy Boyd, the owner of the soon-to-be Knoxville Smokies, we have kept the city's yearly commitment low and manageable. This project will connect East Knoxville to downtown, breathing new life and energy into another corner of our city. The stadium is a huge win for Knoxville. Mm. But often, some of the biggest wins in our city are not the ones you hear about. I'm talking about the heroes in our community. People like Traffic System Supervisor Philip Reyes. At 2 a.m. Saturday, March 12th, while most of us were sleeping peacefully, Philip and his crews worked in the midst of heavy snowfall to address 57 broken, twisted, or flashing traffic signals, successfully repairing all signals by midday so that we could stay safe on the roads. I'm talking about people like police officer Nick Adams, who on February 9th, arrived at the scene of a crash to discover a driver trapped in a burning truck. Officer Adams climbed into the bed of the truck, helped the driver cut off his seatbelt, and quickly led him to safety, escaping the wreckage just moments before the truck was engulfed in flames. And I'm talking about master firefighter Justin Engel. Last August, as floodwaters rose rapidly on Paper Mill Drive, he heard a woman scream, Jesus, help me, and he jumped into action and into the water. As her vehicle was being overtaken by the rushing water, Engel cut through the nearby brush, jumped toward the woman, and was able to get a rescue line around her just before the water went over her head. With help from other firefighters, they were both pulled to safety. Philip Reyes, Nick Adams, and Justin Engel, would you please stand?
Now, if I could ask all firefighters, police officers, and general government employees to please stand and be recognized, because you're all our heroes. Thank you. These are the faces behind so many acts of bravery, hard work, and selflessness in our city. We are grateful for them. One of my core goals for this year's budget is to support and retain these heroes in our city and to recruit the heroes of tomorrow. This very site is part of that through a new partnership that teams Fulton High School students with our first responders. The benefits of this program will be far reaching. Let's take a minute to hear from kids already taking a new criminal justice class and the first responders they will soon be working with. Please turn your attention to the screens. suited to protect and serve their community and someone that has grown up in the community. If we could get more officers from Knoxville, it would be, I mean, it would be a blessing for the city. This is the first year of criminal justice at Fulton. It's a new class and, and the interest is very high. The kids are really excited about it. I like the idea of like being a public servant. The more and more I look into it, the deeper it gets, the more I'm interested in it. Real life is I see it, I understand it, I get it. This is how it works and that public safety complex is gonna do just that for us. And the best part is, is we can walk out the door and walk across the street and go see those things. street it'll be a perfect chance for us to connect with those kids that want to do it in that class and sometimes you can go sit in the class and just you know give my experience and tell them some stories if we can explain the topics but then go show them this is what it looks like in real life that's gonna that's gonna stick with the students a lot longer i've heard friends like they see me taking it and they're like oh i really want to take that class it sounds really cool so i think more kids will want to take it being able to be there for people you know help in some way, shape, or form. Youth is our future. We love to get the youth to become officers and become mentors. It's a special feeling to know that you're part of the community, but now you're on the front lines of protecting the community and serving. Could everyone involved with these partnerships please stand? The students, Fulton High School staff, first responders who are involved in this program, Thank you. This is proof positive. We must continue to build and support the heroes of tomorrow. We must all strive to continue the positive momentum, and we must provide quality services and infrastructure for all who live and work here. At the same time, our population is growing. Building permits are up by over 10%. Residents are calling on city services more than ever. Police calls alone are up 12%. We face skyrocketing inflation. We have an acute number of unfilled positions across departments. This spring, we could not recruit enough qualified applicants to hold a police academy. The American Rescue Plan has been a welcome band-aid the last two years, but is only temporary relief and cannot be used for salaries. So, like every administration in recent history, we are at a crossroads. We must face the realities and make difficult choices. Do we scale back city services, undermining our safety and quality of life? Do we stop building and maintaining core infrastructure and risk shortchanging our future? Or do we consider new revenue to fill the gap? This is not an easy decision. I have heard your requests for more police officers on our streets. I have heard your requests for quality roads, sidewalks, for more greenways and top-notch parks in all neighborhoods. And I've heard your requests to protect Knoxville as an affordable city. I want all these things too. And I'm not willing to sacrifice Knoxville's safety and quality of life by being penny wise and pound foolish. We need high quality core services and infrastructure to keep Knoxville's positive momentum going. We can't print money and we can't go into the red. 
and we cannot use our savings account for recurring expenses. That is why I am proposing a 50 cent increase in our property tax rate. This will generate the new revenue needed to maintain core services and support our first responders and public works employees while also ensuring we can invest in the infrastructure our city needs to thrive in the years to come. Remember that right now, our Knox County Property Assessor, John Whitehead, is wrapping up the state's required property reappraisal. And although we are still waiting on the estimated certified tax rate, by August, we anticipate that even with this increase, the equalized rate will be the lowest tax rate in the city since at least 1974. So please know that this decision was not made lightly. We have tightened our belts and have looked at areas to cut back but we must meet the needs of our city. And my budget proposal is a path forward that meets those needs. I wanna share a few highlights with you. As a service organization, the vast majority of the budget goes to employee salaries and benefits. Unfortunately, those salaries have been lagging for some time, especially for our first responders. And acute staffing shortages put our safety and quality of life at risk. We are short over 50 police officers. We have almost 50 vacancies in public service, and more than 250 employees could retire today. City employees who save lives and provide essential services have been doing more with less. Their commitment is unwavering. But working short-staffed is not safe and it's not sustainable. It is past time to address this challenge, but we needed to know the real numbers so we could plan for real change. That is why we hired an outside firm to do a comprehensive study analyzing city wages. It revealed that on average, City of Knoxville employees are about 10% below market. No wonder we are facing challenges in hiring and retention. When we pay thousands of dollars to train a police officer only to lose them to a higher paying job a few years into their career, that is not good fiscal stewardship. The budget I'm presenting today includes $16 million to bring our employees up to fair market compensation. That includes paying all full-time employees a minimum of $15 an hour. This investment will bring our police officers, our firefighters, and other essential workers up to the market level wages across the board and put us on a path to being fully staffed. And these proposed raises are for the rank and file. They're not for me, they're not for city council, they're not for the executive team. This is not only the right thing to do for our hardworking employees, it is the right thing to do for all of us who work and live here and rely on the city to keep neighborhoods safe and livable. Our first responders always have our back, and now it's time that we've got theirs. <laughs> Responsible leaders should not only deal with what's immediately in front of them, they must plan for the future. This is especially true when it comes to infrastructure. To neglect investment in our roads, storm sewers, and parks would risk our community's future as a great place to live. It's not a responsible option. That's why this budget includes a robust capital plan of over $77 million to make sure we are investing in the infrastructure needed for long-term economic stability and resilience. I call the capital proposal the Parks, Pavement, and Pipes Plan. <laughs> So during the pandemic, our parks got more use than ever. I'm proud that we were recently ranked the most accessible park system in the state, with nearly 51% of all residents living less than a 10 minute walk from a park. This budget keeps our commitment to green spaces with more than $10 million to support improvements and maintenance at parks across our city, including Lonsdale Park, Lakeshore Park, Williams Creek Golf Course, and Augusta Quarry at Fort Dickerson. Thank you to all our partners who help make these outdoor spaces accessible to all and places that we are proud of. <clears throat> now to pavement. Knoxville's expect good roads and safe roads for everyone who uses them, whether driving, walking, or biking. Our multimodal roadway infrastructure is critical and building it and maintaining it is a big driver of our budget. This proposal includes $10.8 million for safety investments such as repairs to roads, bridges, guardrails, signage, signals, and other basic safety assets across the city. This is the money to fill those pesky potholes. 
I'm also recommending $8.6 million for transportation infrastructure, including improvements for bicyclists and pedestrians at specific high priority locations. And as someone who loves walking in our Knoxville neighborhoods, and because today is Earth Day, I'm also thrilled that this budget invests over a million dollars to support pedestrian infrastructure and improvements, including funds for traffic calming, curb cuts, and sidewalk design and repair across our city neighborhoods. And finally, pipes, AKA stormwater. Another major driver of our capital budget. This budget includes a $20 million investment in our stormwater system. And this is not just about the pipes. This is an investment in the resilience of our community, a way to make our neighborhoods and roadways safer and less susceptible to flooding and sinkholes. I started this afternoon talking about the power of partnerships, and I want to come back to that theme to talk about one more key component of the proposed budget, affordable housing. We are so fortunate to be a city that people want to move to, and that includes students who go to the University of Tennessee. And yet, as more people choose to make Knoxville home, the shortage of affordable housing has become even more acute. Housing affordability is the number one challenge facing many Knoxvillians. The city does not build housing, so how can we help? The power of partnerships. This time last year, I convened a task force of realtors, home builders, bankers, Justice Knox advocates, Councilwoman Lynn Fugit, and with all of council support, we created the Affordable Housing Fund and committed $50 million over the next 10 years. That's good news. Thank you to everyone on that task force. This year, my budget proposal proposes nearly 10 million to that fund, including 1.6 million to finish First Creek at Austin Homes, 2.5 million for the Affordable Rental Development, Development Fund, 4.2 million for Transforming Western Heights, and 1.5 million for permanent supportive housing. These investments, are gonna create 2,100 new affordable homes in our city. Our economy, our community needs more housing, period. Housing for all types of families and all types of incomes. And while housing is a regional challenge, the city of Knoxville will remain at the table doing our part to make sure we remain a community where families can afford to thrive. Okay, <laughs> so as you leave here today, remember Philip Reyes, Nick Adams and Justin Engel and all of the other heroes in our city and ask yourself, do I have their backs? I do, and this budget reflects that. It also reflects my unwavering commitment to providing you with quality services. Maybe it's just as simple as what my father used to say to me. If you take good care of your people, they'll take good care of you. Thank you for being here today and have a great afternoon. We do have those historic bricks that are ready to hand out for anyone wanting one. Um, that'd be a piece of St. Mary's that you can take home with you. You will find some city volunteers at the exits. You guys, we have one small last thing. Um, now we're going to conclude today's luncheon with a benediction from Knoxville Police Department Chaplain Coordinator Pam Neal. Hasn't this been a wonderful, wonderful time? Don't we rejoice? We can be back together again in person. And we have so much to celebrate. We celebrate the great news about our wonderful, wonderful city. Benediction means good word. And so here's our good word for today. It's actually a story, and you may have heard it before, about a man who was walking along the seashore after a big storm had washed up starfish on the beach for miles. Hundreds of starfish were stranded on the beach, unable to get back in the water. They would surely die on that beach. 
As the man walked along the beach, he encountered a young boy who was one at a time picking up starfish and putting them back in the water. The man went to the young man, he said, what are you doing? And he said, he was putting the starfish back in the water so they would not die. So he walked up to the boy and he said, why are you doing this? There are hundreds of these starfish on the beach. You can't possibly get them all back into the water. What difference does it make? With that, the young boy picked up another starfish and putting it back in the water said, it made a difference to that one. And he went to the next one. It made a difference for that one. It made a difference to the ones that he could. And that's what you and I need to do. We can't fix all the problems in the world or not even here in Knoxville. But each of us can make a difference right where we are. What you do today for someone can make a difference in that person's life. We can make a difference one day at a time, one person at a time, just by taking the opportunities that God gives us to make a difference. That's what we do. So the good word for today, be a difference maker. May we go from this place in peace and love for all of those around us. Amen. Have a wonderful afternoon.